Well, this video took a very wild direction. It was supposed to be a very straightforward video of me showing the modules that I use to test the capacity of lithium cells. And then it turned out that things have evolved and the circuitry has changed in subtle ways because this is such a popular module and it's cheap. It's only between two and three pounds, euros, dollars. They've cost optimized in the most amazing way. The software is quite ridiculous for what they've done. But let me start by giving you a demonstration. So I'll just set that up right now. Stand by for the demonstration. So at the moment, the module is being powered by micro USB cable. I don't know if they do a USB-C version. I couldn't find one with initial search. But micro USB, it's absolutely fine. It draws about 30 milliamps, so I would recommend it from a plug-in power supply because this thing is designed for long tests. It has a capacity for testing cell capacity up to about 9,999 amp hour. So theoretically, it could run a very long time. But what you have is you have a lithium cell connected to the two middle pins of the terminal block, and then you have a resistor of your choice uh, to set your preferred discharge current. In this case, it is a uh, 5 watt 7.5 ohm resistor, which is going to pass about 500 milliamps. But we'll know what it's passing when we test this. Now, when you want to do the test, you set the voltage you want to terminate at. So if I press negative, it says it's terminating at 3, but I usually nudge it down to about 2.7 to allow for the fact that the cells I'm testing are usually a bit crap and of very high impedance. Once you're ready, and this is where I'll warn you in advance, there's probably going to be a bit of strobing because this does lots of stroby things. Watch this. So it starts flashing, and then it starts strobing the LEDs. Right, and it's showing that the amp hour currently is zero because it's well one milliamp hour. The current is uh, when it steps down to it, 496 milliamps, and the voltage is currently 3.79 volts. Under load, the cell has dropped, and it will just keep mincing away, discharging the cell and calculating the amp hour rating until the end. And when it gets to the end, it does something quite annoying, but, but also it's very vivid and it tells you that the test is completed from a distance. It strobes the display really fast. It's all about flashy, blinky lights and changing displays, but it's all very functional. OK, now you've seen it running. Watch your eyes. The light is about to come back. So let's go straight to the pretty pictures with the original, the OG of these units, the ZB2L3, or if you're American, you might prefer ZB2L3, which actually sounds better for some reason. And this unit uses a XY scanned multiplex display. It's got the uh, column drive, the digit drive, should I say, and the segment drive. Plus, it looks as though it's also driving these segments in the same way. And going by these capacitors across the buttons, it was also using the multiplexing to actually scan these buttons as well. The new version, which I had to remove the display from because there's circuitry hidden, un hidden under it. It's tri-state multiplexed. It has seven pins to save a pin count in the chip. And the seven pins don't just do the four-digit display, but they also do the LEDs at the side. But the buttons, in this instance, each have their own input. It's quite interesting. And with the original, the OG, to calibrate it, you hold the three buttons down all together, and then you plug the US micro USB into it. And at that point, it basically goes into calibration mode if you hold them down for long enough and it asks for a sample of zero current. So basically speaking with nothing connected or you could bridge the battery connections out, but basically speaking, it's just looking for a base reference value of zero for the current. And once you've got set that up, you press OK. I'll just show here. You press OK and then it will ask for either the current or the voltage and it tells you what it's looking for, 10 volts and 2 amps. And you, in the case of the 10 volts, you'd get the bench power supply possibly and you'd connect it to the battery connections here and you would uh, measure the voltage. You wouldn't necessarily rely on the You'd use an accurate voltage measurement device to measure the voltage directly at the unit, tune it to 10 volts, and then press OK again. And then the same for 2 amps. You'd uh, 
potentially use a resistor and the bench power supply and an inline current meter to get that two amps exactly and then press OK again, then it's calibrated. The new one does not have that. So the circuitry uh, is very similar between them. There is the classic 8205 dual MOSFET. It's just being used as a single parallel MOSFET in this instance. We've got a 0 0.02 uh, sense resistor for the current. Uh, and under here, presumably, because they're not reverse engineered, this circuitry of this, the older one, uh, it has the voltage uh, sensing circuitry. But here is that little op amp. A63A, it turns that's an LM321. Now, wish all the numbers were that easy to remember. Uh, and we've got a voltage regulator, 3.3 volts, although it does use 5 volts as well as 3.3 uh, volts. So that's the, the OG version. Here is the new version, which I started reverse engineering, but let's, get, let's remove the display because uh, ultimately I had to remove the display to reveal the hidden secret circuitry under here. Not an awful lot, a little decoupling capacitor, but it let me also probe how the display was configured and they have just got seven pins all on one side of the microcontroller for driving the four digits plus the little uh, segments aside. the side. And there's the three switch inputs. And then after that, we've got a spare connection, which they have brought out on the back of this onto a little solder pad just for options, uh, possibly diagnostics, not really sure, though the LEDs would also be good diagnostics. Uh, and then we've got the MOSFET drive, we've got the voltage sense input and the current sense input, um, and uh, the same arrangement, the dual MOSFET, sense resistor, little tiny op amp, single op amp, and then the 3.3 uh, volt voltage regulator. Okay, let's go straight to the schematic and explore the circuitry, and it's a double page schematic. So page one of the schematic is very straightforward. Page two, less straightforward, particularly because of the very odd way the lithium cell is used, but a logical way. Uh, it took me a while to get my head around it, particularly the configuration of the way things were connected in the circuit board. I was just puzzling and I went to the gym and while I was at the gym, I had that eureka moment that I realized what they'd done and then traced it out and that's exactly what they'd done. So here's the micro USB port providing five volts. The five volts goes out to the next bit, the circuitry. It also goes through a 3.3 volt regulator to power the microcontroller and that also is used as a voltage reference on the circuitry. Then we've got the zero volts. We've got this unknown microcontroller with really clever software in it, using the seven lines to multiplex the full four digits plus those three indicators. There's the three input buttons, there's a the spear connection, and there is the voltage current inputs and the MOSFET output. Um, right, onto the next page, which is just a little bit more complicated, but not so complicated once you've reverse engineered it. So, we have the test cell, the cell under test, and it uh, is not referenced to positive supply, but it is referenced via this current sense resistor to the zero volt rail, so that the circuitry, using this op amp as an amplifier, can actually measure the voltage drop across this resistor. Um, it is effectively also measuring the voltage across the cell via that resistor, so that's going to introduce a very tiny shift I wonder if they compensate software. But let's start with the voltage sensing of the cell first. We've got a potential divider, 15K and 2K, with a filter capacitor. That's the zero volt uh, connection there. I, I just drew the block just to avoid lots of lines going down through the circuitry. And that goes to the microcontroller so it can look at the voltage. And the voltage range of this unit is up to 15 volts. And the current range is up to 3 amps. Most of that will be down to the little MOSFET here. So here's your test resistor, and you can use whatever you want. Uh, you match it to your load, how much uh, the cell that you've got. Say you want, you want a 12-volt cell, you might use a higher value resistor to reduce the current and the, therefore the heat dissipation. But the test resistor you put in, um, you get two 7.5-ohm resistors that you can configure either one in its own, which I use for roughly 500 milliamps, uh, two in series for lower current, or two in parallel for higher current. The MOSFETs uh, switch that resistor 
down to zero volt rail and at that point it actually becomes in line with the cell and is starting to discharge the cell. And th at the end of the discharge cycle, when it reaches the pre-programmed voltage, it turns this MOSFET off to avoid discharging the cell too low. There will be a very, very slight trickle discharge, so don't leave it on like and walk away and forget about it forever. But, you know, a day or two would be absolutely fine. But there is always that slight 15k load, which is a high value resistor, to be honest, which is going to pot potentially just drag that cell down a little bit in voltage. So just don't leave yourselves connected to it. Um, the gate resistor, and this is where suddenly you see that every electronic designer has their favorite base value of resistor. This designer's Favourite value was 360 ohms, apparently. So the microcontroller switches the MOSFET via a 360 ohm resistor. There is no pull-down resistor, which is odd. I guess they just don't think that's critical, particularly because, yeah. But they, they just decided they didn't need it reasonable enough. Um, And that little uh, MOSFET is the type that's used in lithium cell protection circuits. You know you get the little pouch lithium cells. Here's me grabbing another one that's not got a protection circuit. But you know you get a little circuit board in here, and there's the DW01 chip and then the little dual MOSFET. Well, that's the MOSFET they've used, and it probably sets the maximum voltage and current of the 15 volts and 3 amps, depending on what this can handle. But instead of the two MOSFETs in series, as is normally done in the cell protection, They've actually got them in parallel in this instance. An interesting configuration. So to measure the current, they sample the very small voltage that appears over this 0 0.02 ohm current sense resistor. And there's that 360 ohm resistor again. And it goes to the input of the op amp, cute little op amp, LM321. How memorable is that? There is a potential divider on the positive input to the op amp because op amps compare the voltage between the two pins. And this one is using what they call negative feedback, which means it acts as an amplifier based on this resistor and uh, this resistor here, effectively. But here is a very high value resistor with that 360 ohm resistor again, which sets quite a low voltage threshold on the plus. And then the negative is sent to that super low voltage with its feedback um, and then that will provide a nice stable output voltage buffered up to a higher level within the range of the analog to digital converter that goes via 2k resistor filter resist uh, capacitor and then it goes to the microcontroller the power supply the potential divider is from the 3.3 volts as a nice stable reference but the actual power supply for the lm321 is from the 5 volt supply via a 360 ohm decoupling resistor, and then uh, a little capacitor going to the zero volt rail. <laughs> it looks so simple. This took so long to reverse engineer. Um, but it's good. I like it. It was very enjoyable to reverse engineer because this sort of brain twisting circuitry, the way had this, they had this configured, stimulates the brain somewhat. It's not like your usual circuitry. So if you want one of these, they're, well, they're all over. AliExpress. You can type in ZP2L3 and they'll conveniently show you one at an angle like that so you can't see the number on it. Uh, you'll probably get the modern HW-586 and I'll provide a link down below to the, this one that I know what it is. However, be aware that you may find it useful just to test it by applying a fixed voltage across it and measuring that voltage to see what it displays because if it's running... Um, you can actually see what it's actually measuring. And likewise, the current, you can stick a meter in the series with the test resistor and you can actually monitor how close they compare. And then if necessary, although it's not calibratable, you can then just adjust things accordingly. Um, but having said that, I was surprised how accurate this one was. It was very accurate. But there we have it. Uh, amazing circuitry. The fact that they are tri-state multiplexing, uh, not just the the four digits, but that uh, the three indicators all into just seven pins just to save those pins. And it's most likely that one of the biggest cost saving things was that this doesn't have any 
shall we say, it's probably a one-time programmable device with no non-volatile memory. So they couldn't, that's why they got rid of the calibration because, well, it just complicated things and it meant they had the more expensive chip with the non-volatile memory in it. By cutting things down, that's why these are available for just a couple of quid. It's very impressive. It does make me wonder, though, was this someone else's pet project that got adopted and mass-produced? Who knows? If you know, let me know in the comments down below. But a very neat an interesting circuit.